Let us for a few moments concentrate on the Divine Master and pray for the welfare of the whole humanity. The Shanti Riyom Dasat Om Stapakaya Jadharmasya Sarvadharmaswarupine Sāpakāya jadharmasya sarvadharma svarupine avatāra varishthāya rāma krishnāya te nama asato āsad gamaya Tamaso Maju Dirgamaya Asato Masadgamaya Tamaso Maju Dirgamaya Rityor Mamritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme Incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real, to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. In the last few classes we have discussed about the guru-disciple relationship, how it is very essential in the spiritual life of a person. In order to develop spiritually and to reach the goal, it is very important there should be definite relationship between the guru and the disciple. We have discussed enough on this topic. Sri Ramakrishna said, Have faith in the words of Guru. Follow his words. You will get everything. Don't be hasty. Don't be impatient. Don't be idle. everything will be taken care of. When you are living a spiritual life, very important point you should remember is that God directly supervises your life. The more you are very much aware of your life, it is better. Spiritual life really helps you towards reaching the goal. Every moment of your spiritual life is important. Every moment of your existence is important. Every moment of your thinking and acting is important. Another important theme I am trying to 
start today. Again, Sri Ramakrishna has given hints about this topic. We should understand very thoroughly. These are all very useful for our spiritual practices. Sri Ramakrishna has said in the Gospel, I am quoting his words, It is God alone who does everything. You may say that in that case may commit sin, but that is not true. If a man is firmly convinced that God alone is the doer and that he himself is nothing, then he will never make a false step. He says further, It is God alone who has planted in man's mind free will. People who have not realized God would be engaged in more and more sinful actions if God has not planted in them the notion of free will. Sin would have increased if God had not made the sinner feel that he alone was responsible for his sin. Again Sri Ramakrishna says further, those who have experienced God, seen God, are aware that free will is a mere appearance. In reality, man is the machine and God its operator. Man is the carriage and God its driver. Now this is the topic which I am going to discuss in one or two classes about this idea of free will, how we have got limitations in the name of free will. We always feel a sense of freedom of action within ourselves and think that our activities are characterized by free choice. I wanted to do it, I did it. While the habit of thinking in causal terms with regards to things external is so ingrained in us that when we analyze happenings external to us, whether material, phenomenon or mental activity of others, we always find or think that they are causally determined. The whole thing is under the realm of cause and effect. The action is necessarily related to the character and circumstances as any event to the sum of its conditions. Thus, the problem of free will is a maze and it is extremely difficult to find a way out of it. But the difficulty arises because it is involved in the very approach to the problem. Every one of us acts 
on the basis of the feeling of free will. Though we may experience limitations in exercising it. But when we try to find out if the will is really free, that is, if it is free from the operation of causation, we have already prejudged the issue by assuming that there is determinism. It's all predetermined. That concept will come. Once we begin to examine in this way, we can't help casting the net of determinism far and wide. To act in the manner that he at the moment judges to be reasonable and right, this judgment of an act as reasonable and right itself may be said to depend on one's knowledge and experience, which again are determined by other previous causes. So there is no objective condition to which we may refer a particular activity to decide whether it is free or not. Unless we can define properly what we mean by the exercise of free will in a verifiable manner, how is it possible to decide whether an action is free or not? Even if all events are cast, no scientist can give all their causes. And even if some are uncast, there are no scientific means of distinguishing between the cases where there is really no cause and the cases where we merely cannot find the cause. So, under these circumstances, either we have to grant there is freedom of the will on the basis of our inner feeling or accept that everything is determined on the basis of external analysis which however is inconclusive as already pointed out. We see that both these attitudes are based on our own imperfect reasoning and may or may not correspond to reality. In the very nature of things, it is impossible to decide the question either way from the point of view of reality. As such, since the problem is ours, that is phenomenal, the answer also must be from the phenomenal point of view. That is, as it affects us. We must therefore make a different approach to the problem and try to make sense out of the, the feeling of freedom universally experienced in the midst of the surrounding bondage. We all act on the basis of free will. And the same criteria apply to all. In the sphere of morality and ethics, determinism or indeterminism does not affect the issue because if a thief steals out of compulsion, then the magistrate also punishes him out of compulsion. Further, from the moral point of view, action is not referred backward in time to circumstances. 
and predispositions of which as motives it is the legitimate outcome but the man brings his action face to face with the thou shalt idea which he finds within him and according to its conformity or want of conformity with this law he approves or condemns his conduct if there is pure determinism only metaphysically our responsibility ceases not ethically sometimes we excuse our own actions on the principle of causation by character and circumstances yet if one really seeks to excuse himself in the sequel by trying to show that it was impossible for a man with his particular antecedents to act otherwise than he did he is regarding the action entirely from an external and non moral point of view which for him in the circumstances is an immoral in the moral sphere the sense of right and wrong and the feeling of freedom are sufficient grounds for the exercise of free will but people behave in a way that they have acted upon their own will and so they are prompted by their motivations and they begin to commit things for which they become responsible but there is divine will which oversees all our doings the divine will operates all the time all of us are under the power of the divine will that we understand when we make little progress in our spiritual life you will see that divine will is acting every moment in guiding us in giving corrections to our life in giving directions to our difficult circumstances and emotions so we should surrender ourselves to the divine will instead of banking upon our own free will but as long as we are in this material world we are forced by this notion of free will for this subject i will try to dwell upon again in the next few classes in more details today i am just speaking as a introduction so <clears throat> people give reasons for whatever they do and they are classified under free will if we take uh, the stories of the life 
you know in in shrimad ramayan a great episode how that whole event occurred it's because of the emotional action committed by ravan the most powerful king at the time who was not afraid of any body in this universe he became so powerful because he got several boons to strengthen him to satisfy his cravings and he got all these boons on account of his intense tapasya but the austerity was meant not for realizing the truth but for the sake of uh, satisfying his desires so he began to act in a manner in a free way as if he is not to be uh, frightened by anybody and he is all powerful and because he became so strong he became arrogant and extremely lustful and so he began to do many things in a rash way without caring for anything whatever he does is a law so he began to act in that free manner and he just took away the wife of shri ramachandra when shri rama was not there he came to the cottage where sita was living he came in the guise of a mendicant in the guise of a monk and he took her away to his palace and began to force her to become his partner which janaki refused but anyway in one way it has got a cause only if you understand uh, the previous lives what he did etc why he was born in this way why there was so much craving etc on account of some curse which he incurred he got into this uh, demon's body and he acted he acted in a way he wanted to do it but the divine will operated upon it allowed him to go this way finally to free him from all this impurities and liberate him so the divine will acted upon him on the advent of sri ramachandra when he came and he fought with ravan and 
he was Ravan was killed in the battle and thus all his uh, uh, suffering was over anyway but the idea is if you think you are the doer etc if you think you have got free will to do things you must be very careful and uh, as sri ramakrishna points out the man who acts on that free will feels that he is a person who has committed the sin he is responsible for that so he comes under the wheel of cause and effect and he undergoes necessary reaction in the life anyway we shall talk about this in much detail in the next classes page 544 shri ramakrishna tells a practice to the discipline of tantra under the bell tree at that time i could see no distinction between the sacred tulsi and any other plant in that state i sometimes ate the leavings from a jackal's meal food that had been exposed the whole night part of which might have been eaten by snakes or other creatures yes i ate that stuff sometimes i rode on a dog and fed him with luchi also eating part of the bread myself i realized that the whole world was filled with god alone one cannot have spiritual realization without destroying ignorance so i would assume the attitude of a tiger and devour ignorance while practicing the disciplines of the vedas i became a sanyasi i used to lie down in the chandni and say to hrade i am a sanyasi i shall take my meals here Chandni is an open portion in the temple garden with steps descending to the Ganges according to the orthodox hindu tradition a monk is forbidden to live in a house i vowed to the divine mother that i would kill myself if i did not see god i said to her o oh mother i am a fool please teach me what is contained in the vedas the puranas the tantras and the other scriptures the mother said to me the essence of the vedanta is that brahman alone is real and the world illusory the satchidananda brahman described in the vedas is the satchidananda shiva of the tantra and the satchidan the krishna of purana the essence of the gita is what you get by repeating the word 10 times it is reversed into tagi which indicates renunciation after the realization of god how far below lie the vedas the vedanta the purana the tantra to hazra he said i can't utter the word om in samadhi why is that i can't say om unless i come down very far from the state of samadhi i had all the experiences that one should have according to the scriptures after once direct perception of god I behaved like a child like a madman like a ghoul and like an inert thing I saw the visions described in the scriptures 
Sometimes I saw the universe filled with sparks of fire. Sometimes I saw all the quarters glittering with light, as if the world were a lake of mercury. Sometimes I saw the world as if made of liquid silver. Sometimes again I saw all the quarters illumined as if with the light of Roman candles. So you see, my experiences tally with those described in the scriptures. It has revealed to me further that God himself has become the universe and all its living beings and the 24 cosmic principles. It is like the process of evolution and involution. Oh, what a state of God, oh, what a state God kept me in that, kept me in at that time. One experience would hardly be over before another overcame me. It was like the movement of the husking machine. No sooner is one end down than the other goes up. I could see God, I would see God in meditation, in the state of samadhi, and I would see the same God when my mind came back to the outer world. When looking at this side of the mirror, I would see him alone, and when looking on the reverse side, I saw the same God. The devotees listened to these words with rapt attention. Shall close. But the point is, the free will, the idea of free will comes. The choice is there before you. The choice is there before me. I, I can choose anything I want. I can do that. I have got all the uh, necessary faculties to... I am quite strong, I am quite intelligent. And so thus, the identification with uh, his little power makes him feel that I can do that and I will do that. It's good in one way. That's what Sri Ramakrishna tells. Because of that feeling, he feels responsible if he does anything wrong. But sometimes, if, if something wrong is done, we put the blame on others. Though it is done because of our own action. <laughs> That's the way. But the point is, everything is conditioned. The mind is conditioned, the body is conditioned. So, we are living the life in a conditioned atmosphere. Realization of the truth means you have to get out of this condition. That is the real freedom. So, that's what Sri Ramakrishna tells, divine will. Sakali Tomaricha, how nice that song. Tomaricha, Tomar Kurama. Loke Bole Ami Kori. People think, I do, I do. Tumi Jantra, Ami Yantra, Tumi Jantri. I am the mission, you are the operator. It's a fact. But, after realization only you will know the truth. Till then, you are under the influence of this ignorance. As long as you are under this influence of ignorance, you are carried away by the notion of free will. Naturally it follows, you are pulled by your ego and all other connected attributes and so that's what we we find on account of some actions done in a wrong way how the whole people have to suffer and you know in the in the case of Ravan Vibhishana advised Ravan, please don't do that. Why do you want to take the wife of Rama? You have got so many wives in your palace. Why do you want her? Even now it is not too late. Give her back to Sri Rama. He will forgive you. Why should the whole race be wiped out on account of you? On account of you, one person, the whole 
race would be wiped out. But he was so arrogant, as I told. Ravan was so arrogant, and he relied too much upon his own free will, and he would never budge. Who who is that Rama? Like that, he began to assert himself. Finally, the disastrous consequence. And of course, he he acted in that way because he was forced to take that body, and uh, all this game is determined in one way. Determined in one way. <laughs> See, there was one uh, king by name Nahusha. He became the king of heavens on account of his merits. He did 100 Ashwamedha sacrifice. The rule is, whoever does Ashwamedha sacrifice 100 times would be qualified to become the king of the heavens. He did complete 100 Ashwamedha yaga. It is not easy. It is very difficult. But he did it. He was very good king, very meritorious. So naturally, he got the position. He was there, but afterwards, he became power drunk, and he get lost in the enjoyments of the heaven, and he began to lose himself in a very bad way, and he lost all the spiritual strength in him. So then. He lost the merit to stay any more in that heaven, and in fact, he ordered the rishis to carry his uh, palanquin, uh, a dole. He was sitting on the dole, and the rishis were uh, walking. There was one rishi who was a little dwarf. His name is Agastya Maharshi. He could not walk fast. He would walk slowly. And that would cause jerk, and the man, the king inside, was getting irritation. Who is that? Uh, going very slowly. Go quick. So in Sanskrit, go quick means sarpa sarpa. Go quick. Sarpa also means serpent. It has got double meaning. And the rishi was waiting because they won't take action on this. Everything is totally. Uh, his qualification should become nil. His merit should become nil. Then only they can. They should take action. So they wanted to confirm whether his merit is exhausted totally. <laughs> so they began to ask some questions regarding the uh, Vedic injunctions and so on, and he could not. Answer any of those questions, so that proved that uh, he is no more qualified to stay in the heavens. And moreover, uh, uh, he kicked the rishi, and so rishi said, "All right, sarpa, become sarpa. He become serpent <laughs> like that." He told. Once that that was pronounced, then he became repentant. After till then, he was not repentant. When he came to know that he is falling down, he became Ajagara Sarpa. That means uh, Python, very long. And, but he became repentant and he asked, he requested them to forgive him. And then the Rishi said, "Don't worry. Uh, in Mahabharata time, Dharmaraja comes to the forest. That means they all know, predetermined." <laughs> I am talking about predetermination. How it's all set. The rishis know. According to Yoga Shastra, everybody will know past, present, and future. And so, they said, when this truck comes and touches you, you will be released from this python body. Like that, they consoled that rishi. They consoled that king. Anyway, the king had to drop on this earth. From the heavens, 
he dropped down in a big forest and he was living there like a python till dharmaraja came there and he was blessed by the touch of the dharmaraja then he was released so things happen that way and sometimes if you analyze it properly everything turns out to be divine will for example here when the dharmaraja came and touched him his body was released he was released from the python's body and now he was full of vairagya that means he doesn't want any power he doesn't want any position he just wants uh, liberation from the bondage he doesn't want any of these things he became fed up with these things no more enough enough of this those things so from that sense the divine will acted so it gave him a good turn then finally he realized and he emerged in the parabrahman like that everyone's life is like that we go we go as if we are going by our free will finally we end up our life according to divine will <laughs> that's the way thank you